Hi, welcome to Math 109. Um, today, we're going to talk about the properties of exponents, and I'm going to introduce you to logarithms. So, um, first of all, let's review what an exponent is, or what a power is, okay? Um, really, that's the key to understanding the properties of exponents. So, 5 to the third power just means uh, 5 times 5, oops, times times 5, okay? That's just what it means, and I know you know that. Um, so it's just a shorthand way of writing repeated multiplication. And the key to understanding the properties of exponents is really to, uh, just understanding what an exponent means, okay? So um, I am actually not going to review the properties of exponents with you in class. Uh, I'm going to actually have you complete the first 10 pages of these lecture notes on your own and turn them in on Wednesday, okay? I know this is all review for you, but I want you to review the properties of exponents because that is really the key to understanding the properties of logarithms, which we're going to talk about next time. So, um, so I'm going to scroll down here to... Um, so these are all just, you know, reviewing the properties of exponents. And um, I'm going to scroll down here to, I think it's page 9. Okay. Um, okay. So I also want you to understand the difference between a power function and an exponential function. Okay. They're not the same thing. A power function is a variable base raised to a constant power, a constant exponent. Okay, so for example, here we have f of x equals x to the fifth. All right, five, the five, stays constant. We don't, it doesn't change. The variable is the base. Okay, so we have a variable base raised to a constant power. Okay, and um, I also wanted to touch, uh, uh, just review what um, an inverse is. Okay, so if we want to do, to, if we want to do, take the inverse of a power function, for example, x to the fifth, and uh, um, an inverse is just an undo of the function. It's just like we, we're going back in time. All right, so we put a number into our function and we got an output and we want to like go back and figure out what the input was. Okay, so for example, in this case where we have, we put in a number two into the function x to the fifth and it'll give us 32. Now, if we want to get that input back, all right, we want a function that uh, where we can put 32 in and get our original number out, okay? And in order to do that um, with a power function, we would use a root. For example, in this case with x to the fifth, we could take the fifth root of 32, and that would give us our original number back. Um, and the fifth root of, of a number is really the same thing as um, that number to the fifth, uh, one fifth power. Okay, so this is where we're you know kind of introducing fractional powers. Okay, we use we can use fractional powers to represent roots, and um, and so uh, this this section really is just reviewing how how fractional powers work. Okay, so again, I'm going to have you do this on your own because I know this is review, uh, but I want to make sure <laughs> you do review it. What I really want to talk about today is, um, let's see, I want to make sure I get this in the frame. All right, so what I really want to talk about today is the inverse of an exponential function, okay? The, those fractional roots give us inverses of power functions. Um, the inverse of an exponential function is where we start to get into logarithms. Okay, so what's an exponential function? All right, an expo exponential function is a constant positive real base raised to a variable exponent. Okay, so in this case now, the, the, the exponent is the variable and the base is constant as opposed to a power function where the base was the variable and the exponent was a, was a constant. Okay, so an example is 2 to the x f of x equals 2 to the x is an exponential function. Now, we'd also like to have an inverse of an exponential function. We want an undo. So, for example, if we put the number 5 
into the function 2 to the x, it gives us 32, cause to, because 2 to the fifth power is 32. Now we'd like an inverse that would take 32 and give us back the 5 that we put in. Okay, that's what an inverse is. It's like the in undo of the function. So what is the inverse of an exponential function? That's where we get into the logarithms. So let me see here. Every time I... All right, so... Um, <clears throat> So let's define what a logarithm is. All right, the logarithm is the exponent. It is the exponent. I underline the word exponent because the logarithm is the exponent on the positive base b that results in y. Okay, y is the result of raising b to the exponent x. And the log is the exponent. So burn that into your brain. The log is the exponent. The log is the exponent, okay? That's the key to understanding logarithms. It's just that the log is the exponent, okay? So um, we use a logarithm to undo um, the exponential function. All right, so this is saying, okay, the log base b of y is the same thing as b to the x equals y. Okay, so this is asking, what is the exponent on b that gives us y? Okay, so these two things are equivalent expressions, all right? If we have the log base b of y, that is the same thing as writing b to the x equals y. Okay, we're asking, what is the exponent on b that gives us y? All right, so to start out with here, we're just going to practice writing um, logarithmic equations in exponential form. Just so that you kind of, that, I mean, that's just practicing what the definition is. Um, I should mention too, this symbol here, let me see if I can, uh, this symbol right here means if and only if. Okay, if and only if, that's what this little symbol here means. Okay, uh, now in uh, mathematics, if and only if has a particular meaning. What it means is that if the first thing is true, right, then the second thing is true. And also, if the second thing is true, then the first thing is true, okay? So if and, if goes, if and only if goes both ways, all right? So if this is true, then that is true. And if that is true, then this is true. Okay, so that's what that symbol means in case you're wondering. That little kind of double-ended equal sign with arrows. <laughs> All right, so let's go down here and um, do. let's practice writing uh, logarithmic equations in exponential form. All right, so here's an example where um, we have uh, the logarithm uh, log base 3 of 81 equals 4. So what does that mean? All right, now in, in order to understand what that means, let's go back to the, the uh, definition of a logarithm, right? We're going to take the uh, base, it just means the same thing as the base raised to the, that power, is the is the, say b to the x equals y okay so notice b match these up right so um, log base three of eighty one is the same thing as asking what is the power of three that gives us eighty one and that power is equal to four so three to the fourth is eighty one those are the same thing those are the those are really the same equation. All right, so let's do some practice. All right, so uh, in this first one, we have the log base four of 64 equals three. Okay, so four is the base. So let's just write the, write the base. Oops. And that, um, we were, is, this is just asking, what is the power of four that gives us 64? And it's telling us that power is three, okay? 
the log is the exponent. So the result is an exponent. All right, so 4 to the third equals 64 is equivalent to log base 4 of 64 equals 3. That is the exponential form of that logarithmic equation. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Again, we're just going to start with the base. We have log base 2 of 256 equals 8. So write the base. The exponent is 8, right, because the log is the exponent. And the result is 256. Okay, so we have the base, we have the exponent, and we have the result. All right, All right so let's take a look at this one. Um, so this is saying the log base 7 of 1 equals 0. So the base is 7, the exponent is 0, and the result is 1. Okay, all right, so the next one, the base is 5. Log base 5 of 1 25th is negative 2. The log is the exponent, so the base is 5, the exponent is negative 2, and the result is 1 over 25. The log base 16 of 2 is 1 fourth, so that's just telling us that the base raised to the 1 fourth power is equal to 2. All right, the log base four of, sorry, the log base eight of four is two thirds. So that's telling us that eight to the exponent two thirds is equal to four. The log is the exponent. All right, this next one, the log base five. All right, so the five is the base of two x plus five equals two. 2 is the exponent, so 5 to the second power is equal to 2x plus 5. Okay, so you can kind of start to see how we can use logs to solve equations now, right? Because this is an equation we could solve for x, but we're not asked to solve for x here. We are um, just rewriting these logarithmic equations in exponential form. All right, so what's this one saying? The base is 3. Log base 3 of 27 equals 4x minus 1. All right, so the log is the exponent, and so this is x minus 4 is the exponent, and 27 is equal to 27 is the result. Okay, so uh, again, you can kind of see how we could start to um, solve equations using logarithms, because you can see this is just 3 to the third power, so 4x minus or sorry, x minus 4 has to be equal to 3, and we could actually solve that, but we're not actually required to solve it in this problem, so. Um, all right, so let's go down here to the next page. Oops, oops hang on a minute. One, two, word. Where'd my, there we go. All right, let's go to the next page here. All right, so now we're just going to go, we're just going to do this in reverse. Okay, now we're given an exponential equation and we want to write it in logarithmic form. So again, we just had to identify the base, the exponent, and the result, and just swap them around, right? So um, 3 to the third power is 27, okay? Um, so the base is 3. So we're going to write this in logarithmic form. So we're going to write log base 3, all right, because the base is 3. The result is 27, and the exponent is 3. All right, so this is, this is just the saying the same thing. Uh, this logarithmic equation is saying the same thing as this exponential equation. Okay, the, all right, so let's look at the next one. All right, so here the base is 5. So we're going to use a log base 5. All right, the result is 625, and the exponent, remember the log is the exponent, don't forget that, the log is the exponent, that's the result of a log is an exponent. Okay, so um, this is how we would write that exponential equation in logarithmic form. All right, all right, so you're probably getting the hang of this now. So we want to write the log, the base is 11, Okay, so it's a log base of 11 of the result is equal to 0. Okay, the log is the exponent. So the exponent is the result of a log. 
All right, so here we have an exponent with a base of 7. So we're going to write the log base 7 of the result, which is 1 49th, is equal to minus 2. Okay. Here, we're going to, again, we're going to write this as a log. The base is 125. Okay. The result is 5, and the exponent, the log is the exponent, so the result of the log, uh, base 125, of 5 is 1 third. Okay. The log is the exponent. All right, again, log, the base is 128. Uh, we're taking the log of 8, and the result is the exponent, which is 3 sevenths. All right. The log base 4, right, the base is 4, of 64 equals x minus 1. Okay, the log is the exponent, so the exponent on 4 was x minus 1, so the result of the log, uh, log base 4 of 64 is x minus 1. All right, so here the base is 10 log base 10 of 10,000 equals 3x minus 5. All right, so that's the first thing. This is just a general logarithm. Now there are some specific types of logarithms that you're going to be using uh, in your book. In fact, your book um, really focuses on these two types of specific types of logarithms, the common log rhythm and the natural logarithm. And um, the common logarithm rhythm just has a base of 10. So the key here, it's really just a logarithm where the base is 10. Okay. And when we write the common logarithm, it looks just like the regular logarithm, except we leave off the base. Okay. If there's no base, um, if the if the base if the if not if the base is not specified on the logarithm we have to assume that it's ten okay so the log base uh, the log of y equals x okay because there is no base specified we're going to assume it's ten so the log base y of x just means ten to the x equals y okay so we're just replacing the base with ten if it's not specified. Um, the natural logarithm just has a base of e, okay? And we use uh, ln, ln for natural logarithm, okay? So the natural logarithm of y equals x is the same thing as, as uh, a base of e raised to the x power equals y, okay? So this is just rewriting the definition of logarithms with specific bases, the base of 10 or the base of e. All right, so this is just more of writing, writing these logarithms uh, in, in exponential form. So this is just like what we did before, only now we have either the common logarithm or the natural logarithm. So uh, in this case, because we've got just log with no base specified, we're going to assume a base of 10. The exponent is minus 2, right? and the result is 0 0.01, okay? So this is the same thing we were doing before. We're just recognizing that, uh, you know, that the, without a base specified, we've got a base of 10. So 10 to the 1.398, okay? The log of the exponent is equal to 25, okay? Um, here we have natural logarithms, so our base is e, the exponent is minus 1, and the result is x, okay? So natural log of x equals minus 1 um, just means e to the minus 1 equals x, all right? So hey, there we go. You can take e to the minus 1. <laughs> so you gave our, you've basically solved it right there. All right. Um, all right, so now, again, the base here is e, natural log of 4, all right? So that means... 4 to the x squared power, right, the log is the exponent, is equal to 4. 
All right, so now we've just rewritten these logarithms as exponents. So of course we have to rewrite exponents as logarithms, right? So um, let's take a look here at some of these. All right, so um, we want to write these in logarithmic form. So we have a base here of 10. So we actually don't have to specify um, the uh, base if we just write log. Now this is just the same as log base 10, but I don't have to write 10. Um, so the log base 10 of the result, which is 0 0.0001 is equal to minus 4. That's the same thing as 10 to the minus 4th equals 0 0.0001. All right. So now again, I don't have to write the base 10. So I'm not going to do it in this take in this case. So the log of 3 equals, now remember the log is the exponent, the result of the log is an exponent. Uh, so we can write this as log of 3 equals 0.4771. All right, now, now we've got a base of e, so we're going to use a natural logarithm, ln. You don't have to put e on there at all. Um, so the natural log of 0 0.1353 equals minus 2. Here again, we have a base of e, so we're using a natural logarithm. And this is saying that the natural log of 1.6487 equals 0 0.5. Okay? All right. Now, let's get into evaluating some logarithms, all right? So, um, on any of these, really, you could pause the video <laughs> and try these on your own, and then I'll go through them with you uh, if you want to then restart the video. But let's take a look at this. All right, so we want to evaluate these logarithms. All right, so I could rewrite this because I really need to know the exponent, right? E to the minus 5 is the same as 1 over e to the fifth power, okay? Now the log is the exponent. For a natural logarithm, it's just, let's just rewrite this like we did above. Let's just rewrite this as an exponent, okay? Um, I could say uh, x, right? So this is just saying, okay, e to the x power is equal to e to the minus 5. All right, which means that x equals minus 5. Now you could also th think about this as just saying, what is the exponent on e that gives me e to the minus 5? Well, it kind of seems obvious that <laughs> in order to get e to the minus 5, you would take e to the minus 5, right? So um, all of these, you should just be able to rewrite them uh, uh, in exponential form to figure out um, or or ask yourself, okay. So let's look at look at b. Let's so let's just look at the inside function here. Natural log of e. Natural log of e is asking what is the power of e that gives us e. E is the same thing as e to the first power, right? So this is really the same as the natural log of um, of one, right? Because the natural log of e is 1, right? Because the exponent on e that gives us e to the 1 is just 1, right? Now, okay, now we need to take the natural log of 1. What is the exponent on e that gives us 1, okay? So, I mean, we could just say, okay, we call this x, and we could say e to the x equals 1, right? Now, um, one is just any base raised to the zero power is one. So, uh, so really, this is just saying that x equals zero. Okay. So again, you're just thinking through the definition of a logarithm to figure these out. What is for for numbers for c? Um, this is just asking what is the power of ten that gives me ten to the fifth? Well. Obviously, the power <laughs> of 10 that gives us 10 to the fifth is 5, right? All right, so here we have 5 times the log of 10. All right, let's evaluate the log of 10. What is the power of 10 that gives us 10? 
Well, that's just one. So this is really just five times one, right? So that's just five. Notice we got the same answer here. All right, what is the log of 100,000? Well, okay, we're asking what is the power of 10 that gives us 100,000? So it would be nice to just rewrite 100,000 as a power of 10, right? So this is really the same as the log of 10 to the fifth, right? So you have five zeros. Move the fifth decimal place five zeros. So 10 to the fifth is 100,000. And now it's the same as part C, right? So <clears throat> the log um, of 10 to the fifth is just five. All right. What is the log of zero? All right. Well, let's think this through. If I set that equal to x, this is asking 10 to the x equals 0. Hmm. Can we ever raise 10 to some power and get 0? Well, obviously not, right? Um, we could take fractional powers, you know, the square root of 10 is 3 point something, you know, we could take 10 to the 1, one millionth, uh, we get small numbers, but we can never actually get 0. Okay, we can never take 10 times itself some number of times, even a fractional number of times, and get 0. So this has no solution. There is no solution here. Okay, because we can never raise 10 to some power even a negative power and get um, and get uh, zero okay um, <clears throat> all right so let's go down here and look at this one well let's first of all just rewrite it uh, rewrite this as a power of 10 right so 1 over 10 to the uh, 1 over the square root of 10 is the same thing as 10 to the negative 0 0.5. Or I could write it as 10 to the negative 1 half. Okay. So uh, what is the exponent on 10 that gives us 10 to the negative 1 half? Well, that's just negative 1 half. I'll just write it as 0 0.5. All right. Let's take a look at this one. All right, we're asking, what is the power of 10 that gives us negative 100? Negative 100. All right, let's do the same thing here. This is asking 10 to, x, 10 to the x equals negative 100. All right. Well, can we ever raise 10 to some power? A positive base <clears throat> raised to any power has got to be a positive number. There's no way we can get a negative number. You know, if we took, even if we took x to the negative 1, right, uh, that would be 1 tenth. x to the negative 2 would be 1 one hundredth, but we can never get a negative number. So you cannot take a log of a negative number. If that log has a positive base, which logs should always have positive bases because <laughs> uh, we're actually def they're defined to have positive base bases because it, it's a little weird if we have negative. Uh, I don't want to get into that right now. If we have negative base on a logarithm, it just is not not pretty. So you know we're just going to ignore that case. All right, now let's get into actually solving some uh, equations with logarithms. And really, all of these, all of these equations can be solved just by rewriting the logarithm as an exponent. So let's do that. All right. So um, the log base x equals 4. So let's try and figure out what x is. So first of all, it's just a matter of figuring out uh, what is this telling us? What is this saying? This is saying 10 to the fourth power equals x, right? The log is the exponent. So this 4 is the exponent on 10 that gives us x. Well, now we can solve for x, right? So x is just that, 10,000, 1 with four zeros. All right. So again, we're just going to rewrite these as exponents. All right. So this is saying 10 to the fourth power equals 
x minus 1. Now we can solve that, right? So um, this is 10,000. We just f figured that out. And now we can just add 1 to both sides. So x is equal to 10,000 and 1. OK, let's solve this equation. Log base 10,000 equals 3x minus 5. All right, we're just going to rewrite this as an exponent. All right, so this is just saying 10 to the 3x minus 5 equals is equal to 10,000, right? All right, now, um, now 10,000 is just 10 to the fourth power. So we have 10 to the 3x minus 5, oops, 3x minus 5 equals 10 to the 4th. So 3x minus 5 equals 4. All right, now we can solve that for x. We can add 5 to both sides. We get 3x equals 9. So I'm running out of road here, so let's see. I'll just put it down here. 3x equals 9. Divide both sides by 3. We get x equals 3. All right, now we could have actually done this a different way because we know the log of 10,000 is 4. So we could have actually just gone straight to 4 equals 3x minus 5. Okay, so uh, there's a couple different ways. Either way, we get the same answer, though, so that's good, right? <laughs> it's all, always good to be able to do things different ways and get the same answer. All right, one last one here. Again, um, we can rewrite this as, as a... Uh, you know, in exponential form. So this is saying e to the x squared equals e to the 9. And then x squared equals 9. And that means that x is equal to plus or minus 3. But we could also just, we could solve this logarithm, right? This just means 9 equals x squared, right? So again, we get the same answer. x is equal to plus or minus 3. All right? So, let's see, I think that's about it. I have a little summary here of all the properties of exponents and also these, um, the logarithmic, or the, the inverses, okay, so the fractional powers and the definitions of a general logarithm, rhythm, common logarithm and natural logarithm. All right.